okay the shield effect is done now it's time to composite this thing onto your footage so i went ahead and imported the footage into the composition this is actually footage from my doctor strange short recreation video i recommend you guys to check that video if you haven't already i mean the end result turned out pretty good and it's like almost three weeks of work so i really appreciate it if you watch it once all right uh, so okay we have the footage in the scene Okay, change the composition settings to your footage settings. Mine is 1920 by 1080. There you go. And change the transfer mode of this inner ring to screen. Now we need to align the shield position to my hand right here. Okay, let me hide all the shield layers. And as you can see, I have added some track markers on my fingers to actually help me out with this tracking. So now pre-compose the footage. Control Shift C, leave all attributes, name this BZ. Okay, head into the pre-com and double click the footage to go into the layer window. This is where we can do the tracking. If you don't see any tracking options, change the workspace to motion tracking and now we can see the tracking options. Select track motion, this will automatically create a tracker. Click and drag the track point to increase the size and push it right on the track marker. There you go. Let's analyze the track forward. Okay, it's tracking. And track it backwards to finish the track. Okay, there's a lot of motion blur and the track failed. Don't worry, we can actually adjust the track point manually, frame by frame. Like this, all right. Go to the previous frame, push it. Okay, once the track is done, let's create a new null object and hit edit target in the track options. Select the layer to null one and hit apply. Apply X and Y dimensions and hit OK. And this positions the null object right on my hands. There you go. Now let's copy this tunnel object and paste it in the main comp. Hit Ctrl V and let's see this. Okay, we can see that in the main comp the null object is not lining up with my hand. This is because the composition is actually set to a different frame rate than my footage. So let's change the composition settings to the footage settings 30 frames per second and that fixes it. There you go. Yeah, Alright, so we added a null object right where we want our shield to go. Let's make all the shield layers visible. Oh, and also before that, let's create a new null object. Name this shield position. Select all the shield layers and parent them to the shield position. You can simply click and drag the pick whip option and select the shield position. Now, select the shield position, hold Alt and Shift and pick whip the null object to snap to its position and also parent it. Okay, alright, it's looking too big. So let's scale it down. Select shield position and hit S to access the scale properties and decrease it down. Uh, something like this, maybe 50%. Okay, maybe even less, 45%. Okay, that's looking good to me. Okay, let me adjust the workspace to this track markers position so that it becomes a little bit easy to work with this thing. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, now let's animate the shield layers individually. To do that, parent them like this. Uh, select the middle ring and parent it to the inner ring. Outer ring 1, which is this thing right here. Parent it to the middle ring and the inner text this one right here also parent this to outer ring one now large text which is this one parent it to the outer ring one so the outer ring one large text inner text all three comes under one set so if you move the outer ring one everything else moves with it it's pretty cool so outer ring two parent it to outer ring one and outer text parent it to outer ring 2. 
So this way we can actually animate the segments of the shield individually, which we will do in a second. But before that, let's go to the first frame of the tracker, or to the frame where the shield appears, which is this one. And let's adjust the rotation of the shield. So go to the shield position, enable 3D, and do the same thing for all the shield layers. Okay. Now, uh, let's also make the null position 3D too. Okay. Now select shield position and hit R to access the rotation parameters. Rotate it in X axis to something like this. And also uh, rotate it in Y axis to something like this. Okay, alright, that's looking good. Maybe something more in X axis. Okay, set a keyframe. Click on the timer option to set a keyframe. And then move forward a few frames and go to the frame just before the arm rotation starts, which is this one. So set a keyframe and move to the position where the arm movement completes, which is this frame right here and set the X and Y rotation to zero. There you go. Or maybe give it a little bit of Y and also some X rotation. There you go. So this animates the shield rotation at a three dimensional level. It's looking pretty good. Now it's time to animate the shield layers individually. So go to the frame where the rotation stops, which is this one. Select the outer ring one, hit P to access the position and set a keyframe. Move forward like uh, a couple of frames. And maybe like this frame. Move it a bit to the left and a bit downwards like this. Maybe slightly right. Okay, move forward a few frames. Copy the first keyframe, Control C and hit Control V to paste it here. There you go. So this adds some nice little animation to the outer ring one. Well, let's also go to the graph editor, click on separate dimensions, select the X position, select the last keyframe and set the mode to easy ease. And for the center one, set it to like a curved one, it goes like this. Do the same thing for the Y position. And G, okay, G position has no keyframes, there you go. So this smooths this animation. There you go. It's a very subtle effect, but this gives an illusion that the shield layers are separate and not like one single static image. Okay, now let's go to the initial position of the shield effect. Let's animate the shield coming up to do that. Select the outer ring one, hit R and give a keyframe to all the rotation parameters. Move backward a few frames and then rotate it in the Y axis like this, or maybe another direction like this and also give some Z rotation so what happens is the outer ring one rotates and snaps back into its place which is pretty cool okay okay this is looking very slow so let's select these keyframes and move them forward so to speed up the animation okay that's looking good okay all right so based on these keyframe positions let's also animate the outer ring too select outer ring too Okay, to position the keyframe, select outer ring one, hit U to access the keyframes. Go to the position of the last rotation keyframe. Select outer ring two and set a keyframe for all the rotations at that position. Move backwards and rotate it in the Y axis, the other direction. Okay, kind of making like an X here. And also rotate it in the Z axis just like before. Okay, nice. There you go. So this uh, gives some nice little rotation movement during the initial keyframes and it's looking pretty sharp so let's give some motion blur to the entire thing so so toggle on the motion blur for all the shield layers okay the motion blur made it really smooth okay now let's animate the opacity so select outer ring one go to your frame before hit t to access the opacity set a keyframe set the opacity to zero and go to the next frame and set the opacity to 100 Do the same thing for the inner text and the large text. Set a keyframe, move backward a frame and set the opacity to zero. And check this out. There you go, as you can see, we don't see any outer ring before and then it originates. Uh, so do the same thing for all the shield layers. Give an opacity animation. So 
So let's check this out. There you go. Uh, okay, let's select the middle and inner ring and delay this opacity animation a bit. Uh, right when this rotation animation stops, that's when the middle and inner ring should show up. So let's do that and check this out. So this animates the shield effect originating. So like it coming up from nothing. It's pretty cool. Now let's give some rotation to the middle ring to give some life to it. So select the middle ring, hit R to access the rotation parameters, give some G rotation and oh, okay. Uh, the entire outer ring is rotating too. That is because the outer ring one is parented to the middle ring. So we can fix it by linking the outer ring one to inner ring. So this actually separates the middle ring and we can actually animate it as a separate part. So I'll click the G rotation, give a simple expression time times maybe one and check this out. Okay, we can't see it right now. Okay, maybe increase it to time times five. I guess that's pretty fast. So a value of two should do it. Okay, let's copy this expression. Go to the last text, hit R. I'll click the G rotation and hit Ctrl V to paste the expression. And check this out. So this animates the middle ring and the large text slowly. Saying this again, add some nice life to the shield. Okay, alright, uh, okay, I should have fixed this a long back, but as you can see here, the shield is actually positioned a little bit to the top because we actually tracked our first finger. So select the shield position, hit P key to access the position parameters, move it down in the Y axis a bit. There you go, and also move it to the left. And also move it forward in the J axis a bit. There you go. Like imagine in real life if Dr. Strange shields were real, there's no way that those shields will be like planted to your hands. There will be a little bit of place between your hand and the shield. Moving it forward in the G axis will actually simulate that and gives it a more three dimensional feel. Now let's go to the final frame where the shield should disappear. Select all the shield layers. Hit T to access the opacity parameters. Set a keyframe at 100. Move frame forward and set the opacity to 0. There you go. Check this out. So we have the shield appearing and we have the shield disappearing. And also to do this kind of like a glitchy animation, we can move to a frame in the middle. Select all the shield layers. Hit T to access the opacity. Set a keyframe at 100. Move a frame forward and set the opacity to 0. And also move forward a few frames and maintain the opacity at 0. Like add another keyframe at 0. Move a frame forward and then give it an opacity of 100. So this makes kind of like a glitchy animation in between. However, it's so even in order to make it uneven, we can actually select all these separate keyframes and offset their position a bit forward, a bit backward. Like it's all personal preference. like this and check this out there you go so instead of the entire shield turning off and turning on we have all the separate layers turning off and turning on giving some nice variation and kind of makes it look like glitching and also we can increase the number of times the glitching happens so go to a frame where the glitching stops There's somewhere right here select a few layers set a keyframe for the opacity at 100 Move a frame forward, set the opacity to zero. All right. Move forward a few frames. All right. Let's give an opacity of 100 again. Like Select all the opacity and write 100. Move backward a frame and set the opacity to zero. Okay, let me adjust the keyframes a bit. Check this out. There you go. So this way we can actually increase the number of times the glitching happens. So like I said before, it all comes down to personal preference. We can actually tweak it a bit further, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm leaving it at this. And also I want to show you something real quick. To make this look even more convincing at a three dimensional level, we can actually select the outer ring one and move it down in G axis a bit like this. There you go. Do the same thing for the outer ring two. 
move it downwards just even bit more so there you go so this gives an illusion of like uh, the shield effect being a three dimensional thing rather than a 2d image just added on to your arms you're getting my point right you need to get all those details correct if you want to improve your composites like if you want to make it look good you have to put in extra effort that's it are you real? So